drain as the UFC featherweight king. Our tale of the tape for this bantamweight fight. So these fighters relatively close in age, just a year apart, with similar height and some differences in reach. Here once more is Bruce Buffer. Ladies and gentlemen, this fight is three rounds in the UFC bantamweight division. Introducing first, fighting and out of the blue corner. This man is a mixed martial artist, holding a professional record of 18 wins, five losses, and one no contest. He stands five feet six inches tall, weighing in at 135 pounds. Fighting out of Sao Paulo, Brazil, Pedro, the young Punisher, Munoz. And now introducing his opponent, fighting out of the red corner. This man is a Muay Thai kickboxer, holding a professional record of 28 wins, seven losses. He stands five feet seven inches tall, weighing in at 135 pounds. Fighting out of Rio de Janeiro, Brazil, presenting the former UFC featherweight champion of the world, Jose Aldo Jr. And when the action begins, our referee in charge, Dan Mergliata. Dan Mergliata, your referee. You ready? So here we go with the start of this fight. I'm anxious, man. What a matchup it is, and it's going to be interesting. And it's going to be interesting to see who has the upper hand. Here. It's going to be difficult to find out how this plays out, right? Striker versus well-rounded fighter. Who's going to be the one that's going to control where this fight takes place? He continues to mix it up, going to the head, mixing in some body shots. I mean, can you imagine having a reach advantage like this? What a luxury. It's a luxury. I've never had one over the course of my entire career. But fighting guys that are taller, you struggle whenever they are very aware of such a massive advantage. This guy is going to try and use this tonight. Wow! What a fantastic strike to throw at the exact right moment. He deserves this moment. Go finish this fight. Oh, big left. Lands with the kick there. No pad on that foot. No shit guard. He's taking all of that kick every time he throws it. You can really limit the mobility of your opponent with those leg kicks. Big powerful punch lands. Now he gets back to range. And a miss with the right hook. Mixes it up nicely in terms of staying heavy and also staying active. Takedown defense holds up. When you're in the clinch, you can pull down the head and land these beautiful punches to the head. Oh, and there's another leg kick for good measure. So doing a really good job with that weapon here tonight. And if you're trying to slow your opponent down, mission accomplished so far. When you can land that many leg kicks, you start to affect the movement. You start to affect the hands. Everything changes when you're blasting someone over and over and over with leg kicks. And you start to see the damage, not only in the legs, but in the facial expression right. of his opponent. And he connects with a punch there. We'll see if there's more where that came from. Boxing. Boxing, boxing. Good series of punches by him there. He has been busy throughout. He's doing a great job with the hands. He looks like a professional boxer out there. Stuffs that takedown attempt without issue. He lands a big in the spot. Oh, he connects with another uppercut. He's landed a few big ones so far here. That is his best punch. He finds it from so many different positions, and he can find that uppercut from both sides of the body. So we call on the numbers here, DC. 39 total strikes have landed for Jose Alves. Look at how he turns his hip into that leg kick. Oh! Loose hook. Serve him up. Go get him. Stuffs the takedown there. How good is his takedown defense? Nice punch by out. Stuffs the takedown, no problem. If your opponent has you in the clinch, pull it down on your head, landing punch after punch, you have got to clear that collar tie, reach back inside, and try to find space. Oh. Did that hurt him a little bit? Oh, big left hook there. Oh, straight right. 
continues to mix it up, going to the head, mixing in some body shots. Oh, man, that's hard to watch. Another leg kick lands flush, and if you're the opponent at this point in time, you got to check something. What are you doing? you got to adjust. you got to be doing something different, because to this point, what you're doing is not working. Get close, fight chest to chest, maybe relax on the outside. Don't panic. Don't be jumpy. Try to find comfort in knowing that you've done this. You have the reps. You know how to check it. Just take your time. Be comfortable. Get that leg up. It's only going to take one great check to right. make him stop throwing those kicks. Oh! Oh, really using his reach advantage there as he lands the punch, DC. Nice kick. These guys are going at it. All right, so both fighters now sort of struggling for position here. And there you go. just be a matter of time. Not tapping out tonight. All right, right into side control here, DC. Biggest difference between half guard and side control. Well, side control to me feels like a little bit less control because now my legs aren't really doing anything anymore. Now I'm controlling you with my upper body. So I've got to be very, very aware. It's still advantageous, but it just seems a little more free-flowing than having something like a half guard. All right, so a huge half guard there. That head kick probably would have had me out for good. The guy survives to see another round. Yeah, but he'll go back to that. It landed so perfectly. He set it up great. He did a great job of mixing up the target early, going up high, and getting the desired result. Barboza would be proud. Another combination of leg kicks and paging the Iceman, paging the Motrin Man. Those are going to hurt to me. There's just no tell. You never know when it's coming. That leg is so fast off the ground to get to the target. It's amazing. Straight punch land. Well, eventually you know he's going to turn this defense into offense, but he's certainly doing a nice job on the defensive end. Of the they talk about the feeling out process. He's getting his opponent's timing. Now he's blocking everything. Expect counters as we go forward. And they separate. Oh, big hook. That'll leave a mark. Keeps going back to that jab. Keeps throwing that jab, but unable to land. Visibly limping here. Oh, nice. Big punch, man. All right, he'll engage in a single collar tie. Good defense to block the strike coming back. Well, just exhausting watching some of these takedown attempts. He's unable to get it there. And he's attempting it over and over again. How long before he gets discouraged and accepts that it's going to be a stand-up fight? Oh, nice job to land the straight punch there. Must be nice to have that kind of reach advantage, DC. I know you can't necessarily relate. Looked like he might have landed there. Instead, a swing and a miss by Aldo. Yeah, he's mixed it all up. Oh! Oh! Massive head kick there. We'll see if he can finish. Oh! Just unable to quite find Take that range. Nice double leg, nice finish. Well, these are some excellent ground and pound strikes here, DC. There's an efficiency with which he operates in these situations. He knows exactly when to throw, exactly when to hold, and it's allowing him to really control the grappling aspect of the fight. There's a song there, right? Know when to hold him, know when, when to hold him. Yeah, absolutely. All right, so you got to be careful playing on the ground with this guy. You don't want to mess around for too long. Lands the ground and pound strike. He's putting him in exactly the positions he needs to be in right now. He's able to relax here. 
And he understands, being a veteran of so many fights, that as long as he's on top, he's winning. He feels like he's winning here. Well, not ideal to spend this much time on the bottom, but you can't fault him for his activity. Landing strikes here from the bottom. Nice work by Aldo. Oh, he's got the ground and pound going now. All right, he's got the feet on the hips now, DC, in a pretty good position to get out, I would think, if he so chooses. Absolutely. This is the ideal position for escaping. Now, you're not going to get a submission off or anything like that, but you having your feet on your opponent's hips, it just allows you to build a, a, a push. You just push right. with your feet. You elevate your opponent's hips away from you, and then you just get a jiu-jitsu escape. Push your hand back, hip ice up, back to your feet, now we're back to fight. Well, you gotta be working off of your back. He's certainly doing so here. Nice punch. Bottom fighter trying to control posture, unable to do so. And now he's in a lot of danger. He's gotta grab that head or he's going to get blasted. Strong bottom work here, staying busy. Aldo's back in full guard now. Under a minute now to go on the round. Aldo's got a pretty deep bruise now starting to appear on the right side of his body. His opponent has done a lot of work in that region tonight. Oh, nice job to reverse position on the ground. It was, he's gonna start looking to try to attack a rear naked choke, and that's exactly what he's doing. And he's out. language from his opponent here, DC. He's curled up. No, he's exhausted. He's been beaten. Oh, so an interesting... Oh! Oh, he might be out. drops his opponent and ultimately spells the end of the fight. Referee jumps in there furiously to stop the fight. That is a crazy, crazy knockout just at the end of the round. Well, he's going to enjoy watching this one back. Let's take a look at the replay of the knockout just a moment ago. It was right hand after right hand after right hand. Finally, he found the one that hit the exact sweet spot that ended his opponent's night. Send it in there now to Bruce Buffett. Ladies and gentlemen, referee Dan Bugliano calls a stop to this contest at four minutes, 59 seconds of round number two. Declaring the winner by knockout, Pedro the Young Punisher, Munoz! Well, we congratulate him on a huge knockout here tonight. He'll probably keep that smile while he's sleeping tonight after what he was able to produce. Here. He's going to be smiling for a really long time. When you get a knockout like that, not only do you get the win, you also most times walk away with a $50,000 bonus check.